Now we're going to add another button to this circuit, but this time we're going to use the pull down resistor method. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in my button, and this button's going to land basically in rows 41 and 43. Again, I want the legs pointing to the left and right sides. So 41 and 43, and again, I favor placing the button further to the right. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to press it down. And this time, instead of actually coming off the positive rail on the left with a resistor, I'm going to come off the positive rail on the left with a wire. This wire is heading into row 41, which is the top leg there of the button. So again, I'm coming off of the positive rail and heading into the button with a wire. This next step involves both a 1K and a 10K resistor. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the 1K first. This 1K resistor is going to come off the lower leg of the button down here, which is in row 43, and it's actually going to span all the way up to row 39. So I want to bring it past the body of the button. So I'm going from 43 up to row 39. Next I'm going to grab the 10K resistor, and this one's going to run actually spanning the ravine in row 39. So again, I have the 1K resistor going up and down this direction, and the 10K going in this direction. What we have here, actually, the configuration is going to give us our pull-down resistor effect. Uh, what we have is actually going to now feed one path to the input pin and another path back to ground. So let me go ahead and wire that part up. So I'm going to grab a wire here, and this is going to be my path to ground. This is going to come off of row 39 and into the negative rail on the right. And then my next step is going to be running this wire from row 39 on the left up to my next GPIO input pin, which is pin 17. So I'm connecting row 39 down here up to GPIO pin 17, which is actually row 8. So the second button uses the pull down resistor. The path for the current comes off of the positive rail, heads into the button on this top side of the button. When we press the button, it'll connect the path down to the bottom, which will then shoot up our 1K resistor and then all the way up this wire here to our GPIO pin. Now you may be wondering, why wouldn't it go just over to the right down to the ground rail? Well actually, that's because of the fact that the current is going to take the path of least resistance. It's going to probably have some amount of current that's going to travel that way, but for the most part, it's going to shoot uh, towards the GPIO pin. And what we're going to really see here is basically an effect where the GPIO pin will read true whenever we press the button and false whenever it's not pressed. You may be thinking, well, why not just get rid of this 10K resistor and this wire here to ground? Because, as you can imagine, coming off the positive rail through this button, hold this button in, and create a path to the GPIO pin, of course it's going to shoot current towards that GPIO pin, causing it to read true you could theoretically make this work without this resistor and this wire to ground. While that may be true, this pull-down effect ensures that this GPIO pin is reading at a low or off position uh, whenever the button is not pressed. So this resistor and path to ground is what pulls it down, pulls that voltage towards zero, pulls it towards low whenever it's getting a reading, and low, of course, is what reads as false. So without this resistor and out this wire to the ground pin, you actually might find that this doesn't work properly. So it's something you can try. You might find like, hey, you know, I can make this work without this resistor and this wire. I've seen students do that before, but actually it's good to have it there because it ensures that it works properly. So all right, so now that we have this wired up, we're ready to go ahead and start programming. So I've rebooted the Pi, I've reopened Python 3, and I've reopened my button light.py program from earlier. We're just going to make some modifications so this uses the other button. Particularly, I'm going to change the button 1 variable to pin 17. Now, if you want to get adventurous, you can add a button 2 variable and create some more elaborate code, but I'm just going to repurpose button 1 to pin 17. And because we've reversed the way the button works, now we're using a pull down resistor, the pressed value is true. I made just these two changes, and now we're able to use the other button. So you know this code is easily adapted. I just want to point out that we still have our try accept and our GPIO cleanup at the bottom here. I just wanted to scroll and make sure you know that's still there. So I'm just going to hit File, Save, and I'm going to reopen LX Terminal. I'm going to use the shortcut up top here. 
So I run sudo python3 buttonlight.py. I hit enter and look over at the circuit. As expected, the LED is not on from the start. It should light up when I hold down this button. So here we go. As hoped, it does light up, and when I let go, the light turns out. Looking back to LX Terminal, I need to hit Control C to do the keyboard interrupt, and that executes our GPIO.cleanup, as we hoped it would. So let's take a look at the code one more time. I just want to show you that even though we're using a different type of button, the logic still holds true of using pressed and not pressed. So I'm going to go ahead and change this over to use not pressed. I'm going to save it. And head it back to LX Terminal, run the code again. Looking at the circuit, the LED is on, and now when I press the button, the LED turns off. Back to LX Terminal, I use Control C to end the code. I head back to my program one more time. I want to actually return this back to the original program. I'm going to get rid of the not pressed, and I'm going to set my button back to pin 24. Since pin 24 uses the pull up resistor, the pressed value should be false. But now I'm actually going to change things up a bit. We're going to do a little bit of an adaptation. I advise that you just watch this part, because it's sort of an advanced step here. And I more or less think that uh, you're better off using the external resistor when you're first starting out. But I'm going to show you how to call upon the internal resistor, just so you know that it's there. So gpio.setup button 1 and then gpio.in needs a little bit of an extension. Sort of like how we were able to set an initial value for our LED, we can actually set the internal resistors whenever we're using an input pin. So it looks like this. We put pull underscore up underscore down. So this variable name corresponds to pull up or pull down resistors. And we're going to set it equal to gpio dot bud pull up or down underscore up. So this actually will activate that internal pull-up resistor. I'm going to hit File Save here, but before I run this, we still have our circuit set up with an external pull-up resistor. So let's take a look at that circuit before we run this code. Right here is that external pull-up resistor. But since I've just now adapted my code to use the internal one, I'm going to just yank this out of here. Again, I would advise you just watch this step and uh, if you are eager to do this and you feel comfortable to doing this, go ahead and try it out. However, I advise that you continue using external pull-up resistors until you're more comfortable with wiring and code. So let's look back at the desktop here. I have my code ready. It's been saved. And I'm going to head over to LX Terminal. I'm going to run that code. So I hit Enter. Look over at my circuit. And as expected, the LED is not on. I'm holding the button and the LED turns on. Now I'm doing this without the actual pull-up resistor that used to be here. So we're now using an internal pull-up resistor at the GPIO pin. It's a great way to actually save on space and the complexity of your layout, but again, I, I encourage you to save this for whenever you feel more comfortable with circuit layout and code, because there's a couple mistakes that can happen whenever you're using internal pull-up and pull-down resistors, particularly if you have multiple programs on your desktop and maybe you run one that doesn't have it set correctly. So it's important that you have that awareness of using internal uh, versus external pull up and pull down resistors, plus building them externally shows that you definitely know how they work. So if you ever have a device that doesn't have the option of internal pull up or pull down resistors, you'll know how to build one. So let's go ahead back to the LX terminal screen. I'm gonna use control C to end this program. I'm gonna head back to the button light program here. And I just wanna take away what I did with the internal pull-up resistor, and I'm going to go ahead and also put back my resistor. So I'm just placing that resistor right back where it came from, and I'm going to go ahead and save this program without using the internal pull-up resistor. So what is it that makes it so that we prefer pull-up resistors over pull-down resistors? It seems kind of like a strange thing, right? Because the pull-up resistor is kind of the reverse logic. So let's take a look back over at the circuit and talk a little bit about pull-up versus pull-down resistors. Pull-up resistors are a lot easier to wire. This pull-down resistor is a little more complicated and a little bit harder to see where the current path is traveling. Also, pull-down resistors are a little tricky because you're coming straight off of the positive rail without a resistor. So it's easier to set up a short circuit whenever you're tampering around with your circuit, making changes and things like that. 
It's very easy to make the pressed equals false variable when using the pull up resistor, so why not take advantage of it? Uh, although it might seem the reverse of what we think is logical, that you would think that pressing the button would be setting it true, not to false, just making a simple pressed variable removes that problem. And uh, the Pi has internal resistors that can be configured as pull up and pull down. And as you saw earlier, to convert this to using the internal resistor, all I had to do was just pull this one resistor out of here. To do the same with the pull down resistor is a lot more complicated. So it's actually a lot simpler to switch your pull up resistor button to use internal pull up resistors. So I prefer to build most of my products with pull up resistors because if I do want to start using the internal resistors, it's a lot quicker to convert it. However, there is no absolute correct answer pull up versus pull down resistors. Just like I always say a breadboard is a canvas, every artist has a different approach. If you prefer to use a pull up or pull down resistor, that's your creative expression when building a circuit. So go ahead and learn whichever one seems most comfortable to you. However, I do highly recommend for first time users that the pull up resistor is the easiest to wire and the least likely to make mistakes. If you're feeling inspired, go ahead and start making some changes to this project. There's still space to add more LEDs or more buttons. I'm sure you can come up with something interesting to do with this layout. I hope you enjoyed this project and thank you for watching.